Welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to go over some things to consider and some things to have in place when you're going to drain a swimming pool. And I'll go over some cautions as well. Pool Service Pro. Open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro. Let me start by going over a couple of pools that you probably should never drain. One of them, of course, is a vinyl pool. Now you can do partial drains, but I would highly recommend that you hire a vinyl liner company to do any kind of partial drains of a vinyl pool. And for a fiberglass drop-in pool, the ones that are dropped in by a crane or a helicopter, I guess, in some areas, you don't want to drain these pools either because they're not really in the ground as an in-ground pool normally is. They dig a hole, they drop it in, and... It doesn't really take a, you know, an unbalanced water table, so to speak, to cause them to pop out of their drain because they're not really heavy. So you don't want to drain this. I remember back way back in the old days when I was working in, when I first started working in the industry, there was a fiberglass spa that was drained. I didn't do this, but the repair tech did. He drained it, and then I don't know what it, what happened exactly. It was pretty small. But he left it empty for a couple days, and then when we went back there, the actual spa had popped out of the ground. Now, this was a small spa, like a six-person spa, so I can imagine how bad it would be if a full-size pool popped out. We were able to get it back in the ground by redigging the hole and resetting it, but that just goes to show that this could happen. The walls can also collapse in the fiberglass spas if they're drained or left drained. Only a professional should do this. Now, I know some people that have done these drains to some point, maybe with a foot or two of water and then fill them up right away and they got lucky. But I would recommend if you're going to drain a vinyl in-ground pool, I should have specified that at the beginning that an in-ground pool is what I was talking about, or a fiberglass in-ground pool. You definitely don't want to drain those unless you're a professional that does this all the time and they can do it and they can drain them. But there's certain things they have to do to those pools so that They can be drained safely. So be aware that they have expert skills that most pool professionals don't have. If someone replaces liners, they're probably capable of draining a liner liner pool down if you need the water drained out of there to a certain point. And they have techniques to protect the liner from tearing or separating from the side of the wall. And the last thing you want to do is to have to replace your liner because you decided to drain your pool down. So those are things you shouldn't do. Now, above ground pools, of course, you can drain those. They have a tendency to be very fragile. And they have a tendency that once you drain them, especially if you live in a windy area, that the wind is going to blow and ruin them. So I would say I wouldn't drain the above ground pool unless you need to. And I would say they're pretty disposable anyway. So after a couple you know, seasons, you may want to get a new one, depending on how much you pay for. Some aren't disposable, but some are. So draining those, I would say, would caution because a lot of times the walls are going to collapse or if it gets windy, it's going to be destroyed. Sometimes draining them, parts of the pool will start to crack and break and that liner may may stretch and tear. So those shouldn't be drained. Now let me focus on the pools that are drained all the time, which are in-ground plaster pools or in-ground pebble tech pools. Now there are certain things you should know about as far as weather conditions If it's above 90 degrees, close to 100 degrees, I would say I would not be draining that pool down. Or if if you do drain it down, you want to make sure that you're filling that pool up really early in the morning so that it's not empty during the peak of the sun. Because if the plaster is fairly old, it could crack and chip. And the same thing goes for Pebble Tech. If you're draining a Pebble Tech pool and you notice that there's cracks in it, now this is something that you should be aware of before you even attempt to drain it. Look at the Pebble Tech surface carefully. If you see any cracks in there, I would say it's not a good candidate to be drained because these cracks could expand, especially on a hot day. Pebble Tech's a pretty indestructible surface and it lasts a very long time, but they do get old. And if you have a Pebble Tech pool that is aging and you notice cracks in there or chips in there, 
it may not be the best idea to drain it down uh, at that point. Maybe on a colder day, you get a, you can get away with it. So if you do need to drain it and you're in an area where it's the peak of the summer, you can easily put your drain in at nighttime, drain the water down, and then refill the pool, you know, right away. Have the customer start the hose at four in the morning or whatever so that it's filling up and it's not going to have that much of a problem. But you definitely don't want to drain it and acid wash it if you're going to do an acid wash on a really hot day because chances are you're going to damage the older plaster and it's something that you don't want to be liable for. What are some good reasons to have a pool drain? I think having high cyanuric acid is probably the primary one. If the cyanuric acid level gets too high, you want to drain that. Having high TDS or total dissolved solids, which is kind of just the gunk that stays in the water. You can also drain your pool because the calcium hardness got too high. Now in California, coming out of the tap, it's pretty high anyway. But what's high depends on your area. Like for here, for my area, 500 is not super high as far as calcium hardness. But maybe in Florida, 500 would be extremely high depending on your how hard your water is. But there's all different reasons to drain the pool. I had a customer that bought a house and the pool probably had him in drain anyway for about 10, 15 years. It's a pretty old pool. And he's like, I want to start off fresh because I don't want any of the stuff from the other homeowner, um, you know, contaminating me. And I was like, okay, you know, that's not a big deal. I mean, you know, if you've ever been in a public pool, but I don't think anyone actually used this pool anyway to begin with when I was doing the service earlier. The other owner never used their pool, but whatever you say. So, of course, I drained the pool for him and it needed it anyway because, you know, you need to drain your pool ever so often. How often do you have to drain the pool? It just depends. Some people never really drain their pool much because they get a lot of rainwater that adds fresh water. Sometimes you can do a partial drain and get away with it. I mean, full drains are necessary in some cases. Again, if you want to lower the calcium hardness down, lower the cyanuric acid, lower the total dissolved solids down, which, by the way, salt is one of the elements in the TDS. And as as more of that gets in the pool, it does make balancing the water a little funky. And it's one of those things where you have to drain it ever so often. So draining it properly is the key. And what about the water table? What if, what about you know the pool popping out? I think. The fear of that is more of an urban legend than a reality. Basically, for the water table, for the ground to be as saturated as it needs to be for a fully drained cement pool to pop out, you're going to need like six to eight inches of rain in one day to saturate the ground that much. Now, this can happen if you drain the pool into the dirt around the pool. This is kind of one of those duh things. But people do this. They'll drain the pool and have the water running off into the yard. It'll be, you know, 20,000 gallons absorbed by the dirt around the pool. Don't tell me that the water table is not in a bad state at that point because it is. Because what's going to happen, the ground is so saturated that when you drain that pool, the pool, there's nothing in, there's not going to be enough solid soil to hold that weight down basically and it's going to pop out. I don't know if that's the exact scientific way it happens. But basically, because I've never actually had it happen to me, so I'm, I was, I've never observed it. All I can say is that you definitely don't want to drain a pool when it's been raining six or eight inches in a day or just within a few days. So you want to drain the pool when it's perfectly dry. Now here in California, up until last year, we had very little rain. And so the ground was used to being really parched and hard. And if you try to dig in the soil in my backyard, you couldn't get down an inch because it was such a hard ground. But of course, you know, now you can probably get down three inches. It's still pretty hard here. It just depends on the soil too. Like in Florida, I think you'd have more to worry about because they build houses on the marsh or swamps as we used to call them. And so maybe be careful over there. But here in California, Southern California, I don't think I've ever heard of a pool popping out. I mean, we've had pools in our neighborhood when I was a kid that they left empty and people would skateboard in them. It's one of those things where, and I I see pools all the time in my area that have been left empty for four or five years and not one of those has popped out of the ground, even with the amount of rain we've gotten in California. So I think the soil here is pretty, you know, solid and packed in. And again, you can't really even plant the garden here in my area. It's just such a hard soil. I wouldn't worry about it. And it's something that unless, again, you get tons and tons of rain in a short period of time and the pool is empty, it may pop out. I mentioned that there's a builder in Florida that I know that has built 
over 2,000 pools and only had two of these happen in the course of his building him. And of course, one of them was a pool that was going to be, that was just plastered and it was raining pretty hard that week. And, you know, a situation like that is unavoidable because the pool is empty. And what can you do at that point? I don't think it was plastered, by the way, yet it was just gunited. So it's one of those things where it, it can happen, but it's super, super rare. Now, if you're really paranoid about it, I would suggest getting general liability insurance. The SPPA.com or SPA is a great company, and they do have pop-out coverage for you. So if you are doing a drain of an in-ground pool and it pops out, you're going to be covered with your liability insurance. The reason why they cover it is because they probably have like one claim every two or three years of that actually happening. I don't, I don't know if that's true or not, but I know it's pretty rare, so they don't have too many of those claims of the pool popping out. How do you fix that? I have no idea. It just hasn't happened, and it shouldn't happen to you if you are draining a pool and, and under normal weather circumstances. Now, where does the water go when you drain it? It's best if there's some kind of pea trap in the backyard or the sewer line. I wouldn't recommend draining the pool into the street. That's a big no-no in Southern California. You get a pretty hefty ticket for that. I don't know exactly what it is anymore, but I'm thinking it's in the thousands of dollars for draining a pool into the street. So you want to try to find an area to drain it to in the backyard. Try to find the sewer line. I mean, you can find it sometimes, you know, it's weird. But my sewer line is actually in my garage, in the center of my garage, and there's like a little metal plug. It's weird. But most people have their sewer line on the side of the house. You can find it by a bathroom or a kitchen area maybe. Some have several lines. I mean, if worse comes to worse and there's a washer and dryer in the garage, you can actually use the dryer. I mean, that dryer, that wouldn't work. You can use a washer discharge where the water goes out, you know, when it's doing a cycle, it evacuates some water. You can use that. I wouldn't recommend doing it in a house or a laundry room because sometimes it'll back up because, you know, there's too much water going in there. But you can safely use that in some cases to drain it. Now, if you do drain it and there's nowhere to drain it but the street, then I would say you really have no choice but to drain it into the street at that point. And so kind of use the tactics that other people use and find out what hours the city operates, what hours the code enforcement is driving around, and then kind of use your judgment of when you want to drain that pool into the street. But I think it's always better to drain it into a line in the backyard rather than into the street because it causes lots of problems. I mean, they're going to be wondering if there's a major pipe crack somewhere or something like that. And it could cut, it could bring unwanted attention to you and your business at that point. Now, if you drain the pool, I would say that if you're not going to do an acid wash or a chlorine wash, have the customer refill that pool right away. I would say just having him use the garden hose is the best way. If there's an autofill, it's a lot slower to fill the pool through one of those index autofills. Just have him use a garden hose. It's one of those things where they're always going to say, well, how do I know when to turn the water off? Well, it's really different in each pool. You know, it may take, depending on the water pressure, if you have a 14,000 gallon pool, it may take eight hours to fill. It may take 10. There's no way to know. So just have them look and watch it. So they should start filling it as early as possible. Once it's drained and you get there and take the, the pump out, then they can start filling the pool. If you do an acid wash or chlorine wash, Right after you finish that, you start filling the pool up. Hopefully, you can do the acid wash in the morning. They can start the water. Now, if they're going to go to bed and hasn't filled up yet, it's perfectly safe to turn the water off if there's like a foot or, or more to still go on from the top. It's not a new plaster pool. Now, I would caution you that if it is a new plaster pool and it's being filled for the first time, never turn the water off until it's completely full. Because what's going to happen is that the next day when they turn it back on, there's going to be a ring around that area in the pool where the water was turned off at. I'm not kidding you. This has happened to several accounts that I take care of to where they were filling the pool up after they built it and they turned off the water before it filled. Much more noticeable in a colored plaster pool. Wouldn't worry about it in a Pebble Tech pool, by the way. It's not really plaster. But I would say that if they're going to go to bed and it's not a new plaster pool, it's been done five, six years ago or 10 years ago, no worries about any kind of problem like that. Just have them turn it off and turn it back on in the morning. But it's not your responsibility to refill the pool. It's the customer's responsibility because there's no way you're going to be able to know when to turn the water off. Now, if the house is vacant, you have all kinds of problems at that point. But you should have someone that should be able to fill that pool 
and turn the water off. And it should not be you because you don't have the time to go back there every four or five hours to check on it. So the customer is responsible for that. Now, what about what to add back in the pool? All you really want to do is make sure you have a good cyanuric acid level at some point. You know, 50 parts per million would be a good starting point. Always test it, of course, because if you drain the pool, see what the cyanuric acid level is. There may be some still in that water, which sometimes is weird. But, you know, there's some talk about it being on the walls of the plaster or maybe being in the plumbing. Who knows? But you may have a fairly decent cyanuric acid reading after refilling it. So I would not add any until you check that. And then you're just balancing the pH and alkalinity. You're adding some chlorine to the pool. And you're not doing anything really fancy. Now, if you really wanted to work on the calcium hardness, if that's a problem in your area, if you filled it and it's really low, then of course you can adjust that up if you need to. You really can't adjust it down because the only way to adjust it, adjust it down is to drain the pool. And that's probably one reason why you drained it in the first place. And then if it's a saltwater system, you of course want to add the salt back to the level that's recommended by the manufacturer. It's usually around 3,000 parts per million or somewhere around there with the salt level. And that's about it. It's not rocket science. There's nothing really you have to do beyond adding the basic chemicals to get started. And it should be easy to balance because the plaster is not going to be brand new and having a high acid demand. There's really not a lot of cautions after refilling it. Again, there's more cautions probably about where to drain the pool than anything. But it's a pretty easy process to do. Now, how much do you charge the customer to drain the pool? It just depends on your area. Some charge 180, some charge 250. There is going to be a cost for water for the customer. So you can't go kind of crazy and charge like four or $500 for that because they have a water bill coming. It's going to be two or $300 in some cases. But it doesn't take a lot of effort for you to do this. You just get your sump pump, get your hose, plug it in, find a good place to drain it, and then the customer is the one that's filling it up. And sometimes the customer will even pull the sump pump out of the pool for you and start filling it up. They can fill it up with it on the bottom as long as it's off. It's not a big deal. But the point is, it's not something that's going to cost you a lot to do. Just your time over there to get it started. You know, it should take 10 minutes, I think, to get everything started and running, maybe less. And then the customer fills it up. So it's one of those things where just find a fee that's fair for your area. Maybe set it at a certain rate, 225 for a drain. Customer fills it, and then you charge them for all the chemicals you're putting in there, of course. Whatever number sounds good to you for your area, I think you can stick with that. And just about any pool would be about the same. I mean, if you're draining a 40,000-gallon pool, it may take longer. Again, just use the cautions that I mentioned about the weather. Don't drain in really hot weather because that could damage older plaster. And, of course, you don't want to drain the pool uh, if it's going to be a danger of popping out, even though I mentioned that it's kind of one of those things where you shouldn't worry too much. But again, worry about it if you are if you just have six inches of rain and the ground is saturated, then I wouldn't drain it at that point. I think it's one of those things that's overthought sometimes because you're, you're new or you don't have never drained the pool. It's relatively easy. Just put a submersible pump in the deep end. Make sure you turn off the equipment. It's a good time to, to clean the filter too when you start the pool again. That way everything's fresh, especially if it's a pool that you don't know anything about and the customer just wants you to drain it and start fresh, I always will take the filter apart, inspect the grids, inspect the cartridges, and make sure they start off with a really well-running filter. The last thing you want to do is start up the filter and have DE go all into the nice, clean pool that you just drained. And by the way, this has happened, not to me, but to someone in my group. They drained the pool, they cleaned it, they gave it a chlorine wash, it looked beautiful. They turned on the system, and this is before they thought about cleaning the filter. And DE went all into the pool, made it cloudy, made it ugly. I mean, it's you could vacuum it up. It's not a big deal. It's just the optics of it. The customer's there, and the pool looks beautiful. And then you turn the filter on, and DE goes all into the pool. So again, why, when you drain it, it's a good time to take the filter apart, take the lid off, and then come back the next morning and clean it, or clean it before you put it, put the uh, fill it back up, however you want to do it. But definitely inspect that. Also, make sure the equipment works. If you get to a pool that is new to you and the customer wants you to drain it, I always flip it on first to make sure everything's running because the last thing you want to do is fill it back up with water and then the pump's not working and then the pool starts turning on the customer. So do a little bit of pre-due diligence with the equipment to make sure the filter is in good shape, make sure the pump is running. But then all you have to do is drop your submersible pump in there, run the hose to the drain in the backyard or the sewer line, 
Make sure that, of course, it goes in there and it's not backing up because you don't want it backing up everywhere. And then, of course, just tell the customer when it's done, unplug it, and then they can start filling the pool up again. Or if you're coming back there for an acid wash or chlorine wash, tell them that when you know it's it's finished, you'll be back the next morning to go ahead and, and do the, that part of the process. And then, again, let the customer fill up the pool when you're done. And it shouldn't be your responsibility to refill that pool. If you're looking for other podcasts I recorded, you can find those on my website, swimmingprolearning.com. Click on the podcast icon on the banner. That'll take you to a drop-down menu of close to 1,300 podcasts I recorded. And if you're interested in the coaching program, you can learn more at poolguycoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. I rest of your week. God bless. Real quick, if you're not using pool service software, try Skimmer free for 30 days at getskimmer.com backslash pool guy again that's get skimmer backslash pool guy skimmer everything you need to run your pool service business all in one app pool service pro open a leslie's wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day leslie's pool supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week another great benefit of opening a leslie's wholesale account is leslie's referral program get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a leslie's pro